Welcome back guys to some more Black Sand Under the Skin. This is part 9 in the series. Hope you enjoy it. Big thumbs up if you do. Let's do this. Brawls aren't even the worst part of my job. Sure, you may take a beating, but at least you get the chance to defend yourself. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Get yourself up, Black Sack. Go for a walk. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. People were finally leaving the place. The bar was about to close. And I hadn't seen Mitchell go in or out. I had no choice. Cool, he looks nasty, doesn't he? Jesus, look at him. He looks like a... I see you took me up on my invitation. Looks like a big turd. <laughs> you knew not the common to my anti-fur regulars had all cleared out. I can't say no to good advice. Or good <laughs> That accent. Is looking at you, Mr. Uh, what was your name? As far as I knew, La Iguana always stayed neutral. He played poker with Cassidy, but his joint was used as the gambling drop off for O'Leary's operation. Did it make sense to keep faking it, or was it too dangerous not to? No, we'll go with Farnham. Farnham. Howard M. Farnham II. That's right. Howard Farnham from Ding Dong. You're natural. You're even better at pool than polka. Ah, uh, this here's much easier. No cheating. <laughs> you barely flinched when Cassidy decided to teach that ego a lesson. What do you want a fella to say? Um, I was too flabbergasted to be surprised. Uh, I don't know, done it myself. Ain't my first showdown. There we go. Between you and me, partner, this ain't my first showdown. We all got our own lethal barber. <laughs> Tell me, what do you really want with Cassidy? I can't say it's clear to me. Damn it. Well, nobody's perfect. Desmond O'Leary's my enemy. Let's go for that. Well, you see, Desmond O'Leary is my enemy. If you know a thing or two about him, I can leave it at that. Don't worry about it. I was only curious. Mm. So, what about me? What do you want from me? No one comes to La Iguana just to drink and play pool. I'm here looking for a regular of yours. Dr. Angus Mitchell. What for? The place is on its I'm looking to warn him. That's between me and him. I want to partner up with him. We fought together during the war. Let's try that. We fought together during the war. I just wanted to say hi. Sure. Tell you what. I'll talk <laughs> to Mitchell. Come back tomorrow night. You don't understand. I have to talk to him or else. Or else what? We've got friends that don't want to meet. I've got friends you don't want to meet. I'll lose your chance to make a pretty penny. I'll take Cassidy here at your dealings with O'Leary. Hmm. What should we do? We're not on a timer here, so we can kind of take our time. Um. Let's go with you'll lose your chance to make a pretty, pretty penny. You'd be losing your chance to make a pretty penny. I know how to reward my allies. You think I'd spend my time in this dump if all I cared about was the money? Please, 
Cut the crap. Anything else? I'll tell Cassidy about your side dealings with O'Leary. I don't think Cassidy would be too happy about the role this here dump plays in O'Leary's gambling operation. You follow me? Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Give me your phone number, and I'll give you a call when Mitchell shows up. No. You're going to call him right now, and you're going to give him this message. Oh, he changed his accent as well. When you're sitting in your Shit! Car, right, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. That's him. It's boring and repetitive. That is him. It's so bad that your thoughts spiral in a never-ending loop. Like when you're stuck in your car, on surveillance duty, The owner of La Iguana was supposed to tell Mitchell that a certain anteater was still alive and that it was only a matter of time before he ratted him out. With a bit of luck, that would make him nervous enough to force his hand. Now all I had to do was follow him. No, well, I think it's worked, so... Okay, we got a big bloody horse. It looks like the same one that um, give us a good hiding. Yes, yeah, so we got a gun. Yeah, then what? Got the briefcase. He went in without it. I wonder what's in it. Drugs, money, something like that. It's the back of his shirt. Hell's horses. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the same horse that attacked us with Mr. Elephant Man. Come on. Get it. There we go. We'll be just fine, don't worry. Oh, his name's Gil. stand guard right here. If the cat shows up, okay. you know what to do. I'll be back in an hour. It's quite a scary thing, isn't it, the horse? He's freaking me out a little bit. I'm honest. Yeah, it's definitely freaking me out. Look at him. All majestic and stuff. <laughs> okay, so what are we going to do with him? Mm, so we've seen the gun, so... I wonder what we have to do with this then. So we can go back.
Could I take him by surprise from over there? Although I don't know how I'd get there. You're a cat, climb the walls. Get your claws out. No, he won't walk up there for some reason. Right, let's try and go around here to the left. We could probably get up there, couldn't we? No? How about using the crates? No. I don't know why he's like, as soon as you get near an object, he can't walk any further. It's... Ah, oh, there we go. That's bizarre. We try that again then. No, come on. No, he's not walking any further than that. So we'll just we we'll just go around the corner. When you want to be silent, noise can be your best ally. Yeah, I get that. So what does he want me to do with this then? Okay, so we've gone around in a bloody full circle. What is he after me doing? crates over there. Let's have a look. What's down here? <laughs> He's actually walking all that way. Right, let's bring him back. There's a forklift truck there. I wonder if we can use that. Yeah, there we go. Might come in handy. Um, hold W to move forward and S to move backwards. A and D to change the direction. Ah! 
Wow, I'm glad they had like a cutscene because I would have never ever have guessed what to do with this. We could have been there all day, guys. I'll be honest with you. I mean, he's a fucking cat. Climb the... I see the cats all the time climbing up walls and fences. Too domestic, that's what the problem is. Pounce. Ready? Oh, oh fuck. I'll tell you what kind of gives it away. When you growl before you pounce, that's probably going to give it away, you know? I mean, the, the big bastard horse had a good... Uh, a good idea that you was coming. So we'll try that again. So do we, we, I'm guessing we have to time this somehow. Come on, hurry up, quickly. Go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> How infuriating. Okay, so we're going to jump on big horsey bastard. Nah, I'm going to leave it. He's only going to shoot me. Uh, I probably have cut out the number of times I've tried to jump on him at different timings and it hasn't really worked. So uh, we're going to go and see if we can explore somewhat more. Because we're definitely missing something. As soon as you try and jump on him, he just shoots you. Ah, what's that? Okay, so we're going back onto the rooftops. I did mess up a guy's face with an extinguisher once, but this kind is too heavy for my current needs. What is that? Looks like uh, one of those riot shields. Oh, it is. Oh, there we go. Yep, that worked. He's a big boy, isn't he? I wonder if he's going to help us. The monkey, monkey ape dude. What does this place have to hide? Hmm. It's a key. Hmm.
I'm guessing they're all going to be stuck. Right, so... Will I need help? Who would I call? According to this, the warehouse belonged to a Canadian import company. So what am I doing here? I'm just wandering around looking for what? I don't I don't understand what I'm doing here. Okay. <laughs> I believe in you, son. It could be an Ojibwa totem pole. In which case, the top animal would be a crane. It's fascinating. dream catcher it's supposed to protect children during the night trapping all evil in its spider web if i'm not mistaken these are incense sticks used in cleansing rituals mm -hmm. right and what's the weird box oh is that a card Right, that's been that's really unhelpful. Is there anything any clue to what the fuck it is I'm supposed to be doing? What is it you want me to do, game? God give me strength. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to. R Can I phone a friend? Jesus. What am I supposed to be doing here? Guys, I would honestly advise you do not buy this game. It is. I want to like it so oh, much. But, but with the technical problems the and coming in from issues Montgomery. like this, we're just walking around. Hey, meet me in an hour. What's going on? Bring your camera. I just gave you the scoop of your life. There's just there's just too many things I don't like about this game and I really do want to like it. It's just there's just too much that I don't like. Yes, I know we need a key. We don't have a key. We need a key for this one? Yes, we need a key. Hmm. Hmm.
Is there gonna be a key lying around somewhere? No. Can we get in the back of this? Let's talk to Horsey. Horsey Gill. Nick! <laughs> Don't you even think of screaming. I might not even talk. Okay, let's, let's use our powers on him. What's he, what's he saying? But it's a cool cucumber, I reckon. It looks like an arrowhead. Okay, what's the arrowhead got to do with anything? Um... Okay, and then that one. There Everything go. seems to prove that Gil is a Native American, and I'm almost sure that the woman in the picture is his mother. You know who always believe in you? Your mother. My mother never lost her faith in me. And I gave her plenty of reasons when I was a kid. It all started with something as stupid as keeping the change when she sent me for groceries. Then I started stealing fruit from the street stands. And finally, I turned to pickpocketing. Somehow, my mother managed to keep me in school until I got into college. But I never gave her reasons to believe in me then either. My parents gave me a monthly allowance, which I spent mainly on poker games and the like. So after a year of college, I quit. Then Pearl Harbor happened. I got drafted and sent to Europe. They told me killing was my moral duty, but I discovered it could be addictive. Not all victims were Nazis. But when I got back, I was treated like a pariah, a veteran outcast who never should have come back in the first place. And yet, my mother never ceased to... What's going on with him? Oh, that was easy. I also fought in the war. That's where I met Mitchell. They used me, like many of my people. And then they just tossed us aside. The first time Mitchell offered me to do this, I told him to take a hike. I wanted to get my act together, but I ended up begging him. I don't like Mitchell. I don't like the things he makes me do. I don't like that German rat either. But what I like least of all is myself. I don't like what I did during the war, and I don't like what I'm doing now. Do you know what it's like to kill a friend for the sake of the mission? Huh. But my mother, she always thought I'd make amends and start... I reckon he killed Elephant, dude. Maybe it's time I did just that. It's number three. Ah. Secret base. Ooh. Ah, 
Oh, monkey boys come in. We've got a card here. Let's pick that up. What else have we got? What the fuck? Go in. Hey. You It's all right. Don't be afraid, little girl. Is that is that a kid or a smackhead? Can't tell. I don't want to scare you, okay? Vita, no hurt. Oh, she's, she's disabled, is she? <laughs> um, once upon a time... Once upon a time, there was a brave, seafaring little girl called... Hi, my name is Brunhilde, and I'm very happy, said Brunhilde. And then Brunhilde, who had a beautiful name. Really beautiful. A really beautiful name ran into someone very special. Oh, who was it? A sea cat. A sea cat called John. I'm a sea cat. My name is John. <laughs> Hi, John the cat. I really like sea cats. Hi, Brother Helder. I'm going to use my sea fairy wisdom to help you. Get out of a cage. Get out of a cage, too. Nice. You sad. You say silly things, John the Cat. So what are you going to help me do? Bake some delicious pie. I love pies. Which is your favorite? Wow, that's a very hard question. <gasps> but John the Cat, it's the easiest question in the world. Let me show you how easy it is. My favorite pie is... Uh, pecan? I don't know. Pecan! Whoa, Brunelda. That's exactly what I was about to say. John Brunhilda Front <laughs> She's really freaking me the fuck out, I've got to be honest. Do play each look. <laughs> uh, okay. Hi, bird. Why are you wearing that <laughs> match? If my wife walked in there and seen me playing this, she'd be uh, saying, Dean, what the fuck are you playing? Well, maybe we should get out of here. What do you think, Bird? And what about you, Boonhilda? Don't you think that? Right, what's with the teddy with the gas mask? Can we get closer? No? Well, that was a weird little interaction with the uh, with the gill. Not quite sure what to make of that. What's this little room? What 
are these? These look like prescription pills for people. Ah, with athletes' names on. Yes. That makes sense. Pretty sure I just see a thing pop up, but I can't. There we go. Hmm. A list of names somehow related to chemical agents? So we're going to be watching a movie, I think. Subject, Brunhilde Gruner. Treatment, day 1514. The patient's ability to speak continues to diminish. Now she can only pronounce the occasional word in German. It's as if she had gone back in time, not only due to her declining cognitive function, but because she appears to have forgotten everything she learned since her arrival in America. This degeneration persists, and yet, perhaps due to drastic reduction of benzoprodein dosage, and an increase of anupropion, we have observed a 3% of deceleration of said degeneration. Furthermore, and perhaps this is the best finding so far, the subject exhibits a mild recovery of her speaking function. It's not a lot, and yet we are on the right track. All hope is not lost. So medical trials with a girl. Now, I'm sure we could probably play another one of these videos. Where was the... It was back here, wasn't it? Well, the films. I wonder if we could find one for Yale. Subject, Craig Spano. Treatment, De Zero. The subject is a veteran baseball player who has lost speed, strength, and agility due to the regular aging process. The patient refers intense pain on the right scapula, most likely caused by an old injury. Unfortunately, due to the injury's nature, surgery is not advised. The goals of our medical approach are twofold, to relieve pain caused by the prior injury so that the subject can play without symptoms and to help the patient regain the physical condition lost in the aging process, thus allowing him to perform at elite levels. To that effect, he will receive daily administration of strong opioids along this treatment. Day 128, treatment so far has been a success on all fronts, the patient no longer feels pain when using his right arm. Circumstance that allows him to pitch without fear. Furthermore, the patient's athletic performance is not only up to par with that displayed at the height of his career, but it has even exceeded all expectations, improving the subject's precision and focus. So far, 
The only side effect seems to be a slight euphoria experienced three hours after dosage, which subsides four hours later, taking the patient on an emotional roller coaster of sorts with bouts of mild trembling. Treatment. Day 341. The patient's health has visibly deteriorated. Moments of euphoria and boosted physical performance have become increasingly shorter, while the ensuing periods of depression and weakness have become longer, including severe trembling and tachycardia. Although we have met all therapeutic goals, we will proceed to terminate the treatment in order to avoid causing irreparable physical and mental damage to the patient. Speno enhanced his performance by using drugs. Speno's health took a toll after using the drugs. And the clues collected allow a new deduction. Let's do it. Speno enhanced. Yep. Yeah. We'll go with that one. Um. There we Mitchell go. Was cashing in by selling drugs to enhance athletes' performances. part of Mitchell's scheme isn't that it's illegal or unethical, it's that he didn't even care about compromising the athlete's health. Yeah, very dangerous. not allowed down here you know you're not allowed it's you bastard i should kill you right here right now uh, i don't know you don't know you ruined craig spano's career why i uh, i did it all for her for brunhilde my daughter oh the little girl she was born with a degenerative disease a rare condition similar to the Angleman syndrome. There are only four known cases like hers, and none of the patients reach the age of five. But I couldn't give up. I continued to research and found something. It didn't make her better, but anyway, that same treatment used on healthy subjects seems to improve their stamina and their reflexes. It also seems to improve their pain threshold. Somehow, the Reich heard about my experiments and tried to recruit me to create super soldiers. Yes, that Reich. We're talking late 30s, Berlin. Oh, he's painful to listen to, isn't he? How many breaks is going to have between conversation uh, sentences? <laughs> your country. But the American military also heard about me. 
I spent the entire war experimenting with drugs on soldiers. Some were highly effective, I must say. When the war was over, my experiments were discarded. I was forbidden all access to the drugs, and Brunhilde got worse. But then God sent me Angus Mitchell. We had met during the war, and he came to offer me a deal. I would make drugs for athletes, and he would sell them. With my earnings, I could pay for Brunhilde's treatment. So he's doing it for his daughter, basically. What else do you want me to say? I noticed Yale's name appears twice on your list of athletes. One mention was crossed out. Why? I don't know. A couple of months ago, Mitchell told me to prepare pills suited to his profile. But a week ago, he told me to stop. And then two days ago, he asked me to make them again. About those pills. There was a bottle there before. There was a bottle there before. Yeah, we looked at that one. Where are we, where are we going now with this? There we go. What is he looking at? Behind me, I reckon. Wait for it. Don't dwell on it, Josh. You had to tell him the truth in order to protect Brunhilde. I would have done the same thing. Finish packing up your things and stop torturing yourself, okay? Thanks, Angus. I won't be long. Oh, honey. You like living here? Yeah, me too. But we have to go somewhere else, and it's all that bad cat's fault. Yes, sweetie. We're going to a new home now. A prettier one. And you'll be happier there. Now go with Papa, honey. Give him a kiss. Go on. Give him a kiss. Go on. I don't like, I don't like that lizard. I don't like him. I'm... I'm sorry about this, Josh. But we gave it our best, didn't we? He's going to lock him in there. Wait for it. What do you mean, Angus? I wish it hadn't come to this. Angus, what's wrong? Goodbye, Josh. I hope you're happy, you son of a bitch. They were good people. They didn't deserve this. You're so far from the truth. What the? bit of extra time. The question was, how much? Here we go.
Spano? Spano just ran out that way. Oh, hang on, I think I chose the wrong door. Yeah, we're gonna die out, I reckon, guys. <laughs> Wait for it. It's amazing how, he, how that works with a gas mask on. Alright. about make a meal out of it I'm wrong. Oh, he's, he's nuts. on a roll yeah he's dead
Don't torture yourself. You did everything you could. Will he make it? The doctors think so. They found him unconscious by the basement door. What? Okay, Spano. So they found him unconscious. Lots found Gil, uh, Gil close to the basement door. And then no, okay. So let's go back to Gill. was trapped in the basement. There we go. Could Gil have blocked the basement door from the outside to kill Mitchell? You think? That's a serious accusation. Are you sure, or is this just a theory of yours? It's just a theory. Let's hope we get the truth out of him. Huh. You think Gil was involved in the previous murders? Gil had to kill a friend in order for the mission to succeed. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, one more. No, okay. Jesus, how many of these are there? So there's, <laughs> there's four in this one. Okay. There we go. What if it was Gil who killed his partner, Randall Lee, under Mitchell's orders? Another serious accusation. Are you sure? Yes. Everything points in that direction, including my gut. Wait. Couldn't Mitchell be Randall Lee's murderer? Just do these ones. I'm pretty sure this is. <laughs> okay, a sniper killed Randall Lee. So he misses with two shots at point-blank range, and then he hits a guy smack in the forehead from across the street? No. Mitchell is not the sniper who wiped out Randall Lee. Yeah. 
I guess you're right, but we still don't know what caused Craig Spano's death. Another one. No doubt about it. Spano took drugs from the lab and they killed him. But if that were true, how many more athletes are in danger? And most importantly, who are they? Is Bobby Yale involved? I didn't see them all, but write down these names. Peter Lowe, Xavier Chains, Helen Moore, Bill Goldman, Miles Benton, Alexander Wood, Jacob Ziegler, and yes, Bobby Yale. Thanks. Saving lives for a change, huh? In any case, this has got to stop. We're friends, damn it. You should have warned me about this. Um, I should have called you. I should have let you know. I'm sorry. Smile, Johnny boy. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. This is going to win me the Pulitzer. <laughs> <laughs> the dog doesn't look too happy, does he? Get that guy out of here. <laughs> All right. Let's get this over with. When the war ended, Mitchell convinced Groon to use his super soldier drugs on elite athletes. Somehow, Dunn found out about Mitchell's scheme. So when Mitchell heard that Dunn was on to him, he ordered Randall Lee to kill him and frame Yale for the murder. Then, he made Randall search Dunn's house and the gym for any incriminating evidence he might have had against him. The poor cleaning lady died almost by chance. When you stuck your nose in the case, he tried to scare you by sending his thugs to give you a beating. And when that didn't work, he asked Randall Lee to finish you off on the gym rooftop. But Randall not only failed, he got captured. So Mitchell ordered Gil to put a bullet through his head, which only made Gil upset. You kept getting closer and closer to the point of discovering his headquarters. When Mitchell realized he was cornered, he burned his bridges by setting the lab on fire, along with Dr. Groon and his daughter. Gil saw the opportunity to get back at Mitchell. So he blocked the only exit, so that he would also die in the fire. Did I leave any loose ends? Just a few. But don't worry about it. I'll take care of them now. So I guess thanks for everything. Well, that wraps up that video. If you want to see more, then check out the channel. Until next time, guys. See ya.